Okay, it's seven o'clock. We have a call this meeting to order. The Old Springs Planning Commission. Uh, Judy, you want to call the roll? Yes, indeed. Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Stiles. Here. Ozell. Here. Abraham. Here. Also present is a zoning administrator, um, planning and zoning administrator, Lise Swinger. Okay. Well, welcome, Jerry, officially. And Adam. Officially, as a full timer, uh, we have an agenda. It's not a whole lot to it. I think we could probably could cover a lot of ground here pretty quick, quickly. Uh, is there anything we want to add or remove or, or rearrange? Um, well, I'm wondering about when we, what meeting we're doing the like election. Oh. Oh. Good call. Isn't that this meeting? You can make your nomination as this meeting. Yes, and then you can do a vote on the following week. Okay. And, and what what positions are we talking about? Just the chair is the, the only one that's usually. It's the chair. On, and you can do a vice chair if you want to have that backup in case you're ever not at a meeting. You always did it as just sort of the default of the next most senior person. Right. Um, so that that's your call. Um, can the council representative chair a meeting? Is that allowed? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my position is I would rather Okay. I was just wondering, like, if Matt's not here, like, who? That's fine. That's why we're doing this whole Yeah. <laughs> just in case Matt wasn't here. Okay. <clears throat> well, you're presupposing that I'm going to be elected chair. Well, well, well that's true. <laughs> is this the time that we can do the nomination? Yes. Okay, I nominate <clears throat> Matt Reed. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll do it. Um, I'm moving the nomination to Charles. Second. What about vice chair? Do we have to vote? Oh, we vote next week. Next week. You vote next week, so you can make a nomination for the vice chair, and then I'll hold on to it, and you can do your voting. Who's the next senior most member? It's not. It's. Susan and I were there the time. I think maybe Rose, since she has the. But I think Susan is much more qualified. <laughs> <laughs> is there a nomination? I would like to nominate Susan for Sorry. vice chair. <laughs> I move the nomination. Got that? Got it. I second that. Okay. Okay. So we have an agenda item next week. Next yeah, month. Next month we do. Next and month. I apologize for missing that. Thank you, Rose. Yeah, thank you, Rose. Okay, next item is a review of the meeting minutes from our special meeting on December 28th. Comments on page one. Page two. If not, we have a motion to approve these minutes. So moved. Second. All second. Together. Yeah. All in favor, I think that's uh, probably just you, Rose, and Jerry and I. Yeah. You just left the room, though. <coughs> um, let's see. I'll take this moment, since we'll wait on Jerry for a second, to uh, pass along some information from Chris Connor, which is that if you are short, a little short of your, if you're, I don't know if you can be short of your form, but when you, if you move to adopt the minutes as opposed to approving the minutes, 
someone who has read them or was present but not at the table can agree to adopt the minutes. They cannot approve them, but they can adopt them. So just as okay. an option. So um, that means if we have our alternate in the audience and he's at the table, the next meeting they can vote for Assuming you have an alternate and that Yes. That ad is in the paper, but if you folks know people you want to put kind of a word out there, we're, we're it's pretty much the only way it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there was a there was a motion to approve. The there was a motion to approve, and it was seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. And Susan and Adam works. Absent. Okay. Uh, we have no communications. We have a council report. Uh, other than the fact that uh, I was elected council rep and Judith implements the policy. Oh, we did. We did approve uh, the uh, yeah, 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 street. Yeah, 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 street. So they're moving forward. Is that right? Or they have to go back to Green County. Well, the county, they went to Green County yeah, and, county approved and, and I approved it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the it's a sale. commission on the road. That is a good point. <laughs> we turned it out. Oh. Officially. Right, and we appointed Adam officially. Okay. And we, we are going out for uh, uh, a request uh, put in there for an alternate. Did that go out in, in this week's paper? It, it, I believe it was in last week's, last and week then it'll run for three, and it's also online. Right. So. Did you pick a tree on that team? For the construction? Uh, we already have one. We, we already have the pen. Sure. Oh, the, oh the, winter, the winter was. Yeah. Was, yeah. was okay. then we're, we're negotiating with, with the now to yeah. come up with the uh, final price. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank we have it. Oh, no, it's not. We skipped communications. We don't have any. Citizens' comments. <laughs> Judith, you got any comments? <laughs> yeah. I'm here to do Okay, so uh, next we have um, some hearings on text amendments to the zoning code. Denise, you want to sure. take charge there? Um, the, the prior administrator um, had brought forth some text amendments and um, I continued that on in October. We had, the Planning Commission had passed a number of text amendments relating to non-conforming lots, um, accessory dwelling units, that kind of thing. And um, uh, the council went ahead and uh, voted in favor of all of the recommendations except for the text amendment relating to the accessory dwelling unit because when they um, were looking at the home occupation, adding the um, <coughs> RC in there that we had suggested, they noticed that, that under um, <coughs> accessory dwelling unit, I'm sorry, let me say, restate that, under ex, um, accessory structures, they held on approval of that because they noticed under, when they were looking at home occupation permits for another text amendment, which they did go ahead and approve, that there also was some language relating to accessory dwelling units. Um, in the code, both accessory structures and accessory dwelling units had a principal building floor area of 750 square feet, not exceeding 50%. And so they wanted to make sure that that was uniform. So that if we went ahead, we had already, Planning Commission already approved the accessory structure 
change to be not exceeding 66 percent uh, with the principal building floor area up to 800 square feet, whichever is less. But we didn't notice that with accessory dwelling units, and they just wanted to, us to keep that the same. So. So the last sentence of your report is a it's modified language for 1262-081 section D. So we have any questions? And I know that when we did, when the code um, when that change was made, it was the total of all accessory structures. But I mean, I guess there is the remote possibility that you have one accessory dwelling unit, one structure that could be that big, I and mean, that'd be pretty big. But I guess just to keep it uniform, it makes sense. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to accept this language. So moved. Second. What call roll? Two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dozel. Yes. Styles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sims. Yes. Three. Yes. Okay. Next item is swimming pool text amendments. Yes. Okay. The other one was um, swimming pools. And at the Planning Commission level, um, it became um, clear that, that there were a lot of questions that you were asking about swimming pools and um, how to regulate them. And there were questions about koi ponds and, and wading pools. And it was going to require more uh, research on the part of staff. So um, what I'm hoping tonight to do is just to hammer out what we want to see and then I can come back at the next meeting with a draft of a code that you know you could possibly approve or amend. Um, well in, in the research that I've done, there's a lot of communities, municipalities in Ohio that do not have any regulations at all. And once I started delving into it a little bit, I could see why they didn't, because it can be you can keep it as simple as you want, or it can be very complex. Um, some communities got into um, safety features, uh, chlorination levels, uh, all kinds of different things, um, even the types of materials to use for a fence, and, and whether it's a private or a public pool. I, I can say this for Greene County. Um, the Greene County Combined Health District regulates public pools, um, but they do, they don't they don't mess around with the private pools. And from a building regulation standpoint, that's where uh, Greene County's building regulations would regulate the structures of private and public. But as far as ongoing maintenance certification of whether the pool is you know in good shape or not for private there isn't any regulatory system so I kind of thought that we were looking at two things one one was um, the prevention of a young child wandering into a yard and falling in the pool and then the other thing possibly being looking at someone who doesn't maintain that pool uh, not letting it become this breeding ground for mosquitoes and that kind of thing. So, based on that, Judy gave you, she, I asked her if she could check with her um, group. Well, you want to explain what that group is in Ohio? Yeah, it's the Ohio Munis Municipal Clerks Association. So they're, they have a handle on, uh, you know, any of the ordinances pertaining to just about anything. So I just put out a call and said, how many do you have? existing ordinances to regulate swimming pools and I got a slew of them back which is a little easier than just going online and you can to the uh, codified ordinances and picking and, and choosing because some do and some do not and there is a huge range as you can see from the very very spare to extremely extensive and then a lot of folks did not have regulations. 
So I guess um, we can either like try to hammer out the details or we could uh, make a decision if we want to keep it simple. If we keep it simple, we would put we could put it under accessory structures like um, the like John had it under. Um, <clears throat> I talked with our legal. We could uh, we could add a footnote under accessory structures um, regarding um, accessory structures are allowed in like all zones, but we may we may have a footnote that swimming pools are not allowed in like conservation or uh, industrial. We could do something like that, and we could just keep it very simple. Um, we'd also could also put it into the uh, twelve fifty eight oh one that chart of all the different uh, uses, and we could put it under accessory structures, maybe even note it under recreation and leisure, trying to find it there um, as swimming pools. I mean, there's things like that we can do. But um, whatever direction you want to take, I, I've tried to, based on how she copied this, I just tried to have notes on each thing, and we can kind of look at that. And I guess first the question is, do you think we should Get into this and and um, and how and how how much do we want to get into it? Because at some point um, we're not going to be able to. Uh, we don't have the staff ability to to regulate ongoing inspections. I think you we should be in it for the two reasons that you stated for the protection of children and also for breeding ground for insects. That, that's a concern. I like keeping it as simple as possible. Um, I thought some of them, it, it, what was interesting is some of them that were simple still had some sort of too much detail about certain mm -hmm. things. I thought, you know, the ones that had too much detail about the fences and all that were just, you know, just stating that you want to fence. And I liked even putting in it that this is for the safety of children. So then. There was one that did that. Mm -hmm. was, yeah. Okay. Do you want to just go through each one and hammer it out that way? And, uh, well, let's just um, let's kind of step back and do a meta view here first. I mean, yeah. I think I agree with Susan. I don't think we want to be talking about the amount of chlorine is in the pool. <laughs> um, can we cover the stack of water in the nuisance code? Um, I we can. Um, you know, and did you have a copy of that? I think that's at the very top. Mm -hmm. the very top. We could put some language right into the nuisance code, and that would cover that. Mm -hmm. Some specific language. I don't know if we're supposed to do that. I'm just curious. Well, under the nuisance code, I mean that would be um, if if someone uh, called in and made a complaint, then we would probably have uh, a staff person or a police officer, someone that would go out and check. And then they would. Um, there is a fine and period of time you're allowed to fix it and get back into compliance. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with the people that in the nuisance ordinance. I can talk about it. That's about uh, regulated without trying to get to particular levels of chemicals. And and I don't know what you guys feel, but I think we ought to just, at this point, leave out fish ponds and leave out Agreed. portable Agreed. private wading pools to have people fill up for their kids in their yard. So why yeah. are we leaving out fish ponds? Well, for right now, all these codes are written as for health and comfort and submersion of people. Well, people do yeah. drown in fish ponds that are deeper than... I mean, I'm not necessarily in, in favor of putting in fish ponds, but if it's a depth, I guess I'm working 24. It begs a bigger question. Are we talking just about swimming pools? Or are we going to talk about spas? Um, it, 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 I thought you should include spas uh, because people who have them outside, now, but, uh, I mean, all the spas that I'm aware of have covers. But you want to should be sure that people have them covered and lacked because spas are very attractive to young children and like to get in them. And again, you want to protect you know children. 
But you're saying if you have a safety cover, then you could not worry about the fencing. I would think so. I, I did too. I did too. I don't think it should include spots. You don't think it should? I mean, I just, like, whether, we can't, we can't control whether or not someone puts a cover on their spot. I can't imagine somebody not having a cover on the spot. Exactly. That's because of I'm the saying. energy that you use, so. Yeah. Like, it, it seems like if someone's let their spa open and a child falls in, I mean, like, what, what regulation are we going to put in here that's going to stop that? You're not going to, you're not going to regulate people closing their gates either. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so it's, it, it, it's more just a question of. But like people swimming. don't build spas, people build swimming pools. But this would include, you know, a large, um, not a built-in pool. It would include a large pool that you got for child if, you know, they have the ones that are like three, four feet deep. So it would include that. Yeah, I mean, that would be included. Yeah, I'm not. Choose what else? Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, the, the question of the pawns, another safety issue for young kids. And uh, some of them are quite deep. And I mean, most people are thoughtful about it. They put a fence around it or whatever to secure it. But even ones that are not that deep for a small child, it's a real drowning risk. And um, having had a small pond in my yard, you know, it started to occur to me when I had my grandson, you know, a small kid could drown in that. And I, you know, I'm in the process of taking it out now. But it was not gated. I, you know, I didn't think about it. So I think, and, and in terms of if a gate's open, if a gate is left open to a pool or you decided to a pond that it had to be secured in some way, uh, which most people do do that, but um, it would, that would be something if it was just left hanging open all the time, I would think would be, there would be an enforcement possibility. You know, first you'd be sure, sure. obviously, you know, yeah. not going out of your way to make it hard for people, but it's just, it really is a safety issue. So. Did, didn't we have an adult, uh, an, an older gentleman, fall into yeah. his pond and the garden tried to go in and she they almost was, both drowned. They almost, they almost both, both drowned. Yeah. yeah, so, you know. I don't know what the right regulation is, but it's I don't know why we need to have the language intended for the immersion of the human body. Like, that doesn't... Yeah, well, I think that language was um, was specifically to, you know, to avoid koi ponds and things like that, right. probably. But you, I mean, you, you can fall in regardless of the intention. Yeah. It's designed for a friend. Uh, I do see the... Yeah. yeah, I think we should deal with the pool first and then... Do That's a good more, idea. Do some more research on on the on the ponds. If Judy can send out a there wasn't there's, anything on there's the ponds. Not, there's not it because more. specific to depth of water. What's it's funny that we live in Ohio because if you go to let's just pretend we're in Massachusetts next to the ocean and a lake, there is an assumption <laughs> that there are many places children can drown and they are taught accordingly. Um, right. And the, similarly with a with a fish pond, you I mean it is part of your parental duty to teach your kid not to go looking in there. I mean there's just a certain you have to assume a certain amount of um, responsibility on the part of others, otherwise you end up regulating yourself into insanity. But but a body of water intended for the purpose of bathing is exactly the attractive nuisance because it would be reasonable for a 10 year old to look at it and go, well, geez, that's for swimming and, and I want to swim. Mm -hmm. that, that to me is the difference between regulating a pond where there's a reasonable assumption I'm not supposed to go in there, I'm not supposed to jump in that, or the neighbor's pool, which is ever so tempting. And that to me was sort of the dividing line and there really wasn't regulation when I was asking Talk around to. ponds and there is around purpose things intended for the purpose of bathing as the attractive nuisance. <coughs> I'm convinced by that. Attractive nuisance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we, so we have, if you have these, we have some that are super detailed. If we, even if we stick to 
pond, I mean ponds, if we stick to pools, uh, are we just going to try to do enclosure maybe as a starting point as our first bite at this? In, enclosure or, or permission? Or permitting, in other words, you have to have a permit to, uh, uh -huh. you know, to even get started with. Okay. We're doing that anyways so for the building code, right? The building code, yes, the Green County does does regulate that from the building perspective. Okay. Yes. So so we're covered there. We're covered there, but um, it doesn't make us aware of it. Um, and if we're putting it in as an accessory structure, then you kind of get into all this other stuff about yeah. um, setbacks and lot coverage and right. Well, there should be setbacks and lot coverage on the swimming pool, right? Well, because I think you do probably want it in the backyard, not in the front. So that every swimming pool has to come from a planning commission. No. no, it wouldn't have no. to, as long as it met the requirements. If it was allowed, right, okay. then they would just that. get a permit. I want to bring this up because I just thought it was so funny. From Marion's Code uh, B, it may not be closer than six feet to any lot on which it is located. <laughs> it's floating. That's why I said it's just a completely ground somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's like in their code right now, like that's... Which one was that? The Varian, Varian. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's in the code of ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> as, as far as, as the, did anybody like a particular definition, first off, as to what we're, what we're defining? Are we only going to stick with swimming pools? Are we going to include any bodies of water? Are we going to include spots? So, the definitions that you put, there's two different definitions for private swimming pools and spas, and you're um, report. Oh, public swimming yeah, pools. Yeah, I guess Okay. But we don't have to regulate public swimming pools. Right. Okay. We don't that's have so to. I, I guess I, I kind of don't see why we would. I mean, right. Okay. It's just a duplication. So of the. So Green County does building that. does not building code doesn't require them to put fences. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I don't know what Green County does with with public for public no, for, for private. Oh, for private? No, I don't think I don't think so. I think it's just the building of it. I mean, making sure that the electrical is done correctly and the sanitation and. The Plumbing to it and that kind of I'm stuff. I'm surprised they don't require Well, fences. Denise, were you going to find out whether, because there might have maybe is some duplication. When Denise and I were speaking about it, um, we were talking about insurance regulations for having a pool on your property. Right. That, that in all probability the fence was yeah. going to require it for your insurance. Yeah. So, and I don't no, know. I have no. That's. Yeah, whether you wanted to go there if it was in fact um, I mean I think that since it's like such a you know prerequisite for safety that even if it is covered by building coders we should just there's no reason that I don't think there's any harm in doubling up on the, the enclosure part of it at least. At the fencing? Yeah, fence, any kind of fencing around the pool. I do like the brevity of C in Marion's Code. The pool shall be completely enclosed by a wall or fence at least four feet high in height and containing a locking gate, which I would I would say self-locking gate. But um, And I liked that it was, um, and I'm not sure what the wording was, but some of the others said that it was, the enclosure was on the inside. So you had to reach over, which is the way right. most pools yeah. are. Right. So that a, a young child. So an interior. Yeah. Interior. Yeah. Interior. So yes. Now, now getting back to what Denise said in terms of definition, uh, in, in your write-up, you know, I, I think what you wrote is pretty clear. Would be. Uh, and it starts with uh, under uh, swimming pools and, and spas, and then you go on to the in your definition. You have uh, private pools and spas, 
in structure and down to, uh, I think you wanted to say something, you know, and you did say something about waiting for this. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they had the definition of a waiting pool as anything that was a foot or less. Right. Um, if we are going to get into like koi ponds and things, those then, I mean, I don't know if we want to use the 24 inch cut. I, I don't know. No, well, I didn't want to get into that. Okay. I'm just talking about your definition. So, so sticking with the immersion of the human body, and then that would be automatically exclude koi ponds. Is that what so just that first paragraph is what you're talking about? Yeah. In definitions? Yeah, in definitions. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I like that. It includes the hot tubs. And the right. Mm -hmm. And permanent swimming pools and wave pools, mm -hmm. but not the temporary. Right. And then take out the public when you do it with the public. Right. And then should we just have their, um, this includes hot tubs, other hot therapy devices, or should we just put in a separate definition of a spa. Uh, let's see. I like this, the, this include hot tub. Yeah, I, okay. I don't think there right. needs to be yeah. a separate definition. Yeah, I say just leave. The only thing is having it separate is if you're saying then pools and spas, I guess if you have them lumped together, then does yeah. that mean that the spa then would have the requirement to have the fence? And you were saying you didn't think the spa should have a fence. Yeah. So that would be the right. That first. would be the reason. To well, I, I, yeah, but I think you know things. when we get to the part that talks about enclosures, then to me that would be the place to exclude. Okay. If it has a cover, if it, you know. Yes. Yeah, well, sure. well, they, they, they make pool covers as well. I mean, yeah, but they're not locking. Yeah, that's other things. Not locking. Yeah. So a self-locking gate or a locking cover, maybe? Well, you say specifically for a spa. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's, let's go back to this. So are we okay with the definition? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. I just want to ask one question, and that is, um, are, there's going to be people that are going to say, well, what about my kid's little kitty pool my kid has? So um, is, do we want to have under, there's a section in there where things that are excluded, do we want the definition of something that's 12 inches in depth or less, or just not put that in there? Yeah, I like having that private wading pool, and then you're saying you have the 12 inches and that it's excluded or exempted. Yeah. I think that's fine. Wait, where is that? The, right that's the last paragraph of that section. Okay. Now, as far as getting into permit required application fees and all that stuff, it's, it's just dependent. If we put it under accessory structures, then we don't have to, we already, that's already, uh, that language is already there. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, were you saying that you wanted language in there saying that private waiting pools would be excluded from this regulation? Yes. Yeah, exempted. 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 Yeah. Okay. As described as less than a 12 inches. Yeah, that's making it clear of, you know, 24 inches or deeper, you need a permit, 12 inches. I have a question in regards to it. Aren't there some of these waiting pools that are two feet and they're really not very big still? I well, don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. wouldn't it be 23 inches and less would not need a permit? So there's some that are. Cause if it was 23 inches deep, deep, you wouldn't need a permit yeah, there's either. Some, there's some ones that they're making now that are, are bigger and, and maybe just fall to the side and they're kind of bigger, but they're, you know, they're very temporary. They're you need a permit for a fire too. I'm not saying you shouldn't need a permit for it. It seems to me like it, it would actually- You think 12 inches might be too restrictive? I do, yeah. I mean, because, yeah. Well, those are temporary things you just set up in your yard and, yeah. Well, in your first paragraph, it says if it's 24 inches or greater, that's mm -hmm. what falls as, as no. a swimming pool. So it has to be this anything less than 24 inches that would be exempted. Yeah. Right. Which are so portable or temporary. temporary. Yes, which is portable and temporary. Okay. 
Okay, so if we put this under accessory structures, that means we're also looking at the footages <coughs> and the square footages and the set of axes that are included in that section as well. Mm -hmm. right. So that kind of handles so all of those. I, I, I guess my question would be with if it goes in that area, does, does that, um, it doesn't limit where the pool could be as long as it meets. It, it does in terms of where you are, excuse me, setbacks would be um, like five feet from the side and ten feet from the rear. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, both, yeah. <coughs> but it would, <coughs> excuse me, it would also factor in 800 square feet. Um, for, the total for the total footprint of the accessory structures. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, <coughs> no, they already have a garage back there. Right. Or shed, then the pool's going to be a lot smaller. They have to come for oh, variance yeah. then, right? Mm -hmm. They have to come for variance. So, mm -hmm. oh, they come for variance. Mm -hmm. They can come for dimensional variance. I think that makes sense. But I have like hundreds of pool requests a year. You know. <laughs> And if someone really wants a really big pool and they're covering like most of their backyard, I think they're going to assume that there are going to be hoops like, they need to jump through. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, next on Denise's list is lighting. I think it's a pretty simple statement. Mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I, people don't like light shining in their house and both pools. Where are people using low requirement in pool lighting? I know some places do that. Like in Florida, you have to have light in your pool. And, and not overhead. Well, it, well uh, no, you have to have light in your pool regardless in case something was to uh, fall in at night or something like that. Um, but you're required to have a light in the pool. That's a mm -hmm. waterproof light. Um, I don't know if it's something you want to talk about or address or not. Hmm. But I think most pool builders do that anyway, so sort of that's my understanding. But, um, Can you look into that? Yeah. Because I mean, really what we're doing is trying to get Denise some guidelines here so that she can come back with some other language. So if there's some things we don't know today, we can certainly. Is that more common in an in-ground? Yeah, in ground So, in -ground. What, because so if somebody did an above-ground one, probably they wouldn't have a light. No, no, they don't. They don't do an above-ground pools. Yeah, but for any in-ground pool, they don't have a light bulb. And actually, it's, it's kind of nice too because it does light up the area enough that it's not you know you can see fine, but it's mm -hmm. not shining up your neighbor's house or anything like that. You can see where the pool is. Right. So the edges. Okay, so you're looking to that. Yes. Uh, enclosures would be next then. I mean, it seems like yeah. this 42 inches or four foot is kind of a common thread through all of these. Mm -hmm. That seems to be <coughs> 40, 48 inches. Yeah. And it seems like the latches have to be at least as high as 42 inches. Okay. So a child couldn't reach up yeah. and latch it. Okay. <coughs> and that needs to be on interior. And self latching. Self closing as well. I don't know if that's. It says it was in the previous language proposed, but it wasn't on here. I think it that has a display and self closing. So I'm just trying to. Self closing, self locking. Okay. Um, did, we, did anybody want to get into. I mean, are we going to regulate indoor pools? I mean, did that ever happen? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. And I, um, I, think so. I know of one in town. Okay, that's cool. And the other thing is, is you know, locking the gates in full time use. I mean, that's not really enforceable. Like, how are we gonna? I mean, as long as it's self closing and latching. Yeah, I think that's that's. So is it self-latching? 
Yeah. Yes. Self locking. Self self latching. Self latching. Self closing, meaning that the it's you, a spring it mounted, is a spring so. a spring right. lock gate. Okay. okay. All right. That's good. Self locking. Uh, anything else in terms of enclosure? Right so this was interesting about like instead of a fence, you could use where is it? A natural Sorry. barrier. A natural oh, barrier. Oh, yeah. I kind of like that. I mean, we're not like. I mean, people can hop over Orphy gates if they really want to. We're right. making it difficult, but not impossible. Well, you're not trying to keep a teenager out. You're trying to keep right. out of four year old. That's true. Yeah. In, in the language right now, specifically to say uh, structure is not less than the protection afforded by enclosure from the gate of the land. So, you know. Yes, I do. So, so, so if a person wanted to put a, a hedge in, there's still going to be drunk by, 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 the, by that the last, uh, the last sentence. So it's mm -hmm. not a And in the previous language proposed, it was a barrier. It wasn't a fence. It was just so proposed by a barrier, at least 48 inches in height on all sides, and assessed by self-closing and self-latching gate. I don't even know what that I can see at least 42 inches. I think that sounds fine. Yeah, I think it's a good start. Yeah. So if a so the removable ladder thing is that if uh, an above ground pool is like above four feet and you remove the ladder, it's the same as having yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I took a picture of a neighbor's um, who had an above ground, and so it's really just the I mean, the actual fence around it is maybe a foot and a half, two feet high, but it's, it, you take into consideration that whole yep. pool above ground too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's the only thing that they don't right. have it is, would it, 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 what would fail on that is that they don't have, uh, it, they need to have a gate across the stairs, yeah. steps. Yeah. Right, the river. Mm -hmm. Not the but so the so latch wouldn't be, I don't think we should put a, a height of the latch. Because little kids can't operate those latches. If you're going to make it interior, it's going to have to be high. Well, but if, like what I'm saying is if, it, if this particular example, if you put a gate, right, the latch wouldn't no, it, it would be, I mean, it would, it would be off the ground, so I guess if you're measuring from the ground, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so some guidance on the closures. Yeah. Maintenance. I mean, this is where we start talking yeah. about chlorination and stagnation. Yeah, I kind of like this one language that I put in there that um, the breeding of insects and I mean just something just something simple that can be put into right. the nuisance section. Right. Yeah. You think? Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple like that. Because there are pools that are that have water in them around town that are not Something. Drain them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like what Tremont says, the city of Tremont says, existing pools, existing swimming pools and spots that do not conform to the requirements shall be brought up to uh, compliance within a reasonable period. Yeah, so how long are you going to give them? That's expensive. Well, it, 
Let's see, I'm looking at someone that and they no longer use the pool. Yeah. They're just sitting there filled with water now the pool. If the nuisance part may cover it, but if they are using it now, they so like these guys. They'd have, to, they'd have to bring it up. And I always said, if, if I've got a pool now and I have no fence around it or, or anything, and it's you, I'm using it, then, then I should uh, bring it up. Giving them a period of time. Yeah. So would, in that case, um, again, that's going to be, um, I'm just going to have to have people that always come in and say that they have a pool. Mm -hmm. I don't know how staff could do it otherwise. Um, unless we can kind of a list and send a letter to us trying to all the Yeah. Well, you, you know, <laughs> when, the, when the guys read the readers and so forth. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they probably know. Yeah. We, yeah. we probably know where the pool's on there. Yeah. Somebody buy Google Maps in the afternoon and see the majority. <laughs> probably. Yeah. That's true. Um, and would these would they would we have let those people be exempt from um, a, a paying a fee? Just yeah, they just, yeah. Just, they just, just need to bring it up to yeah. Uh, I think they would have to Yeah, I'm not going to charge them for it from there or anything like that. But, yeah. So then the question is, how long do you give them? I, I give them a year. I think they're eighteen months. I think that's reasonable. I mean, the only reason why it's 18 months is that depending on the time of the year that they get, they, they find they, it happens, but I was in the winter and also to get out of the fence then, you know, finance. I mean, I just giving them six months on top of the year, I think would be fair. So you said 18 months? I, I would suggest 18 months. Okay. okay. I mean, because we're going to adopt this and yeah. then it's still going to take a little bit of time to right. go. If I do send, if I'm able to send like a letter out to people that I can find, I mean, maybe Green County. Wait, 18 months from you. the. But the only date of adoption. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that really makes it so that you would have to have the list. Like, how about like 18 months from the date of them being told to do it? Yeah. I think that's for two. Because I mean, even, like, even if we publish this, these changes, not everyone has a pool is going to read them. And then if they find out 17 months from now, they have to pull the fence. But probably people are going to be talking. I mean, yeah. if it's in the paper, you yes. may not see it, but probably a friend will see it and may mention it to you. Well, but then when are, you know, like, when are we going to compile that list? I know. I mean, so, is, uh, and the, I mean, Green County Building Regulations, they don't keep records that far back. So if the pool is 20 or 30 years old, I don't know that it's going to be in their system anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that part of the research with the, with the staff. Yeah. Yeah, if, there, if there's a way to like, publicize that, I think yeah. that, yeah. that that's yeah. fine. See what, see what they think. You know, okay. Get back to us and say, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, we need sense. a drone <laughs> that we can send out of the town. Yeah. I'm sure that'll go over well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to go over well. Yeah. We'll get Judith and Jerry to get right Just looking for <laughs> Just looking for swimming pools. Just looking for swimming pools. Well, did, is there something in this document anyway that lets folks know that if they're in violation, they've been informed by letter that they're in violation, that they have X amount of time? I and mean, is that just a piece of the zoning code that's already in existence? Because I'm assuming you'll probably come across the piecemeal and then have to say, oh, you know, you're going to have to get a fence and you have for our zoning code this amount of time to right. put that together. I mean, I don't know that answer. I'm just asking you that. Um, because yeah, making that know. amount of time different than for right. some, other some stuff people, in the zoning code people, might be problematic. Right, like I could call my neighbor in a year from now, and they, they say we pass it today, I could call my neighbor in a year from now, and that they'd only have the six months to get the fed, so even less time than that. I mean, can we say 18 months from when it is, or, or should we just, Put an eight or a, a shorter time period from when you're notified that you have to. I mean, uh, I'll have to come back with you on that yeah. as far as what and all do say though is that if we are to say you got a year someplace else in the code to be compliant with right. something else, right. Right. let's not have this rolling yeah. list of I agree. Times I mean, that, right now, I mean, it's, even though I mean, it's like so what's about ignorance of the laws, you know, so that it's 
excuse, but I mean, you have lots of things that people never got permits for now, probably on other things. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, well, this is a new law. Yeah, thankfully. Um, there is this one part in here that, that was interesting yeah. that says the code, this one code in terms of compliance. But usually existing structures are exempt. It does go on to say that in cases where such requirements are not essential to safety and the enforcement thereof would be a hardship on the owners, the zoning administrator has the power to make exceptions. Yeah. I mean, if you have someone who has a huge yard and they're out somewhere and there's nobody right. really near them. I think that's true. Yeah, well, I, I mean, like even, even yeah. building official, you know, like something's grandfathered in is grandfathered in. I mean, like, if we didn't put this in, existing pools would be grandfathered in, correct? I mean, like, if they were built at the time, or what would happen if we didn't have the existing pools section in here? What what legally would be the requirement on the, you know, this is for new construction, right? Mm -hmm. Permit required when installed. But I think that you don't want to grandfather everybody in. Because yes. it's a safety mm -hmm. precaution. Exactly, right. and that's right. why we're doing it, and that's why there's a there's a difference in time. But but the, that language is here already. The city trend language, existing pools. It talks about having some amount of time to compliance. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of being consistent with what you have in other places in yeah. the code, not making this different. That it should be consistent. I with think the other has. places in the code is like 90 days, right? It's for most things. I I just think that fencing is it, it's a little bit oh, more. Well, let, let's have Denise research it and see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and then come back. That's if we come back to this point. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. And just uh, this is just a question I don't know the answer to. Um, do you have latitude in such cases as a uh, zoning inspector, do you have a latitude to say you have 90 days to come into compliance and I, I'll be checking with you as to your progress if it takes you 120 days? And do you have some latitude to say, I see that you're making adequate progress, I'm going to extend this? Is that something that's in your purview? Yeah, it, it definitely would exist because there may be some yeah. other issues that may and it should be. I don't know where it's in the zoning code. But there is a lot of latitude for the right. zoning inspector to right. take in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's about the last paragraph on that page, probably some version of that. Yeah, yeah. Should that's be in there. Okay, so location, area, injury. So if we're for excess for use, we're taking care of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The setbacks and the square footage. Yeah. We're gonna leave indoor pools alone. Yes. Um, everybody has the non-liability clause, so I think we're okay. So really, that kind of hits all your major points, I think. Because it's a lot to work with. I can bring something back and more of a draft form of the code. Okay. Does anybody have anything else on this topic? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Oh, I do have one more question. There was a one group, the Trenton, Ohio, that had utility regulations regarding it. Um, and I don't know if we want if we want to put anything in there. Was it about the drought condition or the um, water shortage? It, it was talking about. Well, I would think that. Uh, well, I don't know. It had to do with over the lines go oh, going well, that's above right. the swimming pool and um, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, like plumbing just, for the intake and outlet of the pool and and just questions like I mean I know that right now. I don't know how rolling pools are drained, but if they would be drained into a um, 
sewer system, well, that would be a big no-no in our in our right. in our staff's departments that handle that. But then that goes straight down to the water treatment plant, right. and that gets processed. I'm sure that is somewhere in the code already about the sewer system, right? Like sewer drains are are regulated. Usually, usually pulls on drain sewer as well. Yeah. You they drain from where the pool pump is out into the lawn. Like into the storm? Into the, uh, yeah, I mean, usually they come to the point from the where the pump is that you would then you could drain it from, and you could then run a line to a storm drain or whatever. I, I have a canal in my backyard in Florida that we usually drain into the canal. Yeah. Um, it's not going into the pool, but um, you know, they usually don't drain into a sewer system. That's, that, that's a lot. If there's a reason why the whole town would have to drain the pools for any particular reason, that's a lot of water to handle at once. <coughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry, like the, I know in North Carolina you can't put a pool under the power line. Yeah. I don't know how. And is that, is that in the zoning? The, the yeah, that's, that's building code or the zoning code? It's in the zoning code. Because my brother bought a black line to put a pool in. The inspector came out and said that. Yeah, that probably was a building inspector. Yeah. I would and assume the that that would be the. Yeah, that might be something yeah, that's yeah, already right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe, maybe we can look up in the next back and we can look at the one of the building requirements. Yeah, that might be yeah. in Ray County's code. Yeah, yeah check, check, check yeah. out. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Or, or we can look at it on our own. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, for that. So, because Yellow Springs has a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. and lines running over there. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how much of that is in the code. Yeah. 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 Yeah.